Geez, Ken, I leave you alone in the garage for just a few build sessions and... What have you done? We put stuff in the wings. We got the wings out. It's kind of fun. It's like a whole different kind of building. Um, it's been... There's really not that much that we have to do in the quick build wings. I'm actually kind of um, surprised. I was like, at first we didn't know when, when we were going to get our finish kit. So I was like, ah, let's go as slow as we can on this so that uh, we um, don't run out of things to build. But now that we got a finish kit on its way, I want to try to finish this up pretty quickly. Hop to it, mister. So Vans does publish a quick build instruction sheet that tells you what steps of the main plans to pick up on. Um, some of it's a little awkward because uh, if it was slow build, you would do a few things while before you put some skins in place, but nothing too bad. Uh, things like put in an access panel on, um, and uh, but a lot to do with the fuel tank. So uh, you pretty quickly get to the fuel tank. You finish sealing it up by putting the fuel cinder in. Be pretty careful with that because uh, if you follow the plans exactly, it kind of got tripped up on it a little bit. So uh, Vans Air Force had some very helpful advice there um, and then we ran into the problem so when you do slow build you don't have the fuel tank connected to the wing when you put the fuel cinder in so it's really easy to put it in and kind of measure uh, and like test it flip it around to see if it makes full travel or not mm. uh, since our fuel tank is connected to the wing we are flipping the whole wing around <laughs> which was a little bit um, extra but it worked, but we wanted to make sure that that fuel cinder had full travel without interfering with any of the stuff that was inside. Was that when I had Millie strapped to me and we were like, yeah, we can do this? You had Millie strapped to you, and uh, I think we ended up putting her in the bouncer over there, which she was not happy with. <laughs> but, um, and then I was putting our borescope camera into the uh, fuel tank through one of the uh, access ports to actually confirm that it's where we wanted it went all the way up all the way down has the clearance that were called out in the plans uh, then we pull out our trusty fuel tank sealant and uh, secure the fuel cinder cap uh, to the end um, then we get to leak testing yep that sucker ain't coming out now now i did find in the wing plans more so than any other parts of the plans i found there's some funnies built into the instructions. So uh, I forgot some of the funnies, but I love the part where balloon not included. So we have not been able to fully leak test this kit yet um, because we bought some really crappy balloons. <laughs> uh, I can confirm that where the balloon connects to the kit, it's leaking. Um, <laughs> I have been able to pressurize the tank uh, inflate the balloon a little bit. You do not want to overpressurize it. Um, about one PSI most is what you, you think about how much surface area is there. You hook that up to your air compressor at 70 PSI, you're building a, probably a new wing, but definitely a new fuel tank if you do. Um, you were using the bicycle pump. Bicycle pump. Um, kind of just rig it up. Um, so, so far the only places that it's leaking is in my jerry-rigged leak test kit that I've put together. Um, while it's pressurized, I use soapy water across all of the rivets on the, the bottom side because we have our wing upside down right now. This is the bottom side that you're looking at. Um, no, there's no air bubbles or anything around anything that we've done or any of the rivets uh, on the top side. We will need to flip it over, which we just haven't yet because I'm doing other stuff. Um, pressurize it again, get a better seal on the balloon and finish the leak test. But I'm optimistic that it was tested at the factory and uh, it remains um, sealed and passing, so. But we will still be doing the whole yes. thing. So it's it's one of those things that if I found a leak quickly, then I've been like, all right, I know I need to go to work on that. Um, so after leak testing, then you get to wire harnesses. Uh, you've heard us say it before, the art of building a Vans aircraft is saying, oh, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. Then you flip the page to the next page going, crap, I have no clue what this means. <laughs> um, wire harnesses got pretty interesting trying to figure out 
uh, all the different pieces that were kind of included with this. Now, uh, we're going with Stein um, Air to do our panel and our avionics work. So they also send us some wire harnesses as a part of the package that we're going with. Um, I've lost track if this wing harness came with the quick build kit or if it came with Stein. Uh, I think it came with the quick build kit because I know Stein builds. Some of this is in the kit. Yes. So then Stein figures out how to reuse these wires to do everything we want to do. Um, and it's going well. It actually starts making sense. So when I got Stein's master diagram of the wire pins, things really started making sense for me. Um, the one thing we haven't solved for yet is mounting our Garmin uh, pitot tube with the AOA sensor. So what we're going to have to do is fabricate a doubler that will go on the skin, trace it out, cut it on the main skin that we haven't installed yet. That's going to be fun. Um, and then um, I'm going to have to drill a couple access ports here and here to match with um, those to run the um, static ports. So we need two static ports that uh, we don't have holes for. Vans, again, I don't think anybody should use the stock Vans pitot tube. It looks um, the bare minimum. It's a piece of uh, fuel tubing that you bend and stick a hose on it and call it a pitot tube. Um, I like the Garmin tube. It's a lot more uh, stout and it, it's heated and all that good stuff. The stock tube goes in this bay right behind the tie down port. Uh, the, this is where the, the tie down anchor goes. Uh, everything I see, everyone's moving it out one, uh, one bay. So you will have an access panel right here to do work on where the bell crank connects for the aerolons um, and those other things. So you will not have an access panel where the pitot goes. Uh, but you can take this access panel off and reach through this lightning hole to access it should you ever need to. So a lot of people are doing that. Uh, we could make an extra access panel here, but I don't think I want to do that. Um, so that's the major thing that we have left to do on this wing. The uh, magnetometer and Adahars unit goes into that access panel. I got the wires all set, got the bracket built for it. Um, all I need to do is attach the connector to it, which is pretty straightforward. Again, you gotta learn how to read these wire schematics. That was, it's not hard. It's just something that I hadn't done much of yet and had to do some work. So after that, uh, we got the bell crank assembly, uh, get the push rod going through here, close this up, attach flaps, air on, follow the plans, do it. Connect this, them to the fuse, go. Yeah. And this wing is pretty yeah, connected to the fuse. That will happen much, much later. So then, this is the left wing. The right wing sitting back here, we haven't touched yet. Um, so at some point, I'm going to call pause on this and swap the wings. Uh, catch up, do the fuel tank on this side, test it, uh, get it caught up to here, get the, the basic wire harness done. The thing that's different about the right wing is that's where your roll servo goes. Uh, so. We have the kit and all the pieces to install the roll servo, get that installed in there. So you get pitot and Adahars in here, you get roll servo and Aerolon trim goes in the right wing. Um, so all that, so yeah, the two wings aren't created equal. No. Um, but the wires run through here. Um, I'm already going to, uh, I realize that separating the ground and the power for the pitot tube is um, not recommended. It creates a nice magnetic field that runs right in front of the uh, magnetometer. So I'm going to rerun those so they're uh, together um, so that uh, it doesn't interfere with the magnetometer when we run our pitot heat, which if you're running pitot heat, you probably need an accurate head in because you're probably IFR. So. Um, want to make sure that that is set. But other than that, it wasn't that complicated. Pretty easy to get here. Um, swap this out. Uh, then we move on to the wingtips where we get to play with fiberglass. Uh, we've already started playing with it. Uh, get in our fly LED boards 
installed in the wingtips. I've uh, got another episode specific about that coming up. Um, we figured out how to mount our fly LED lane-in lights in the lead-in edge. So we will have the quads in the lead-in edge, position and strobes in the tips. Um, our van, our Stein wiring uh, will connect all to that. I think it'll connect all to that. Uh, Nick, it will connect all to that, so we're, <laughs> so we're good. Um, but yeah, what else have I done on this? It seems like uh, I've been coming out just... In between diaper changes yeah. and baby feedings. And it's been working in small spurts as much as I can <laughs> and dealing with the glares I get sometimes for not being in there when uh, <laughs> Millie needs a diaper change and it was my turn, but... Um, <laughs> There's no turns. <laughs> Um, but you now I still kind of miss that we didn't slow build the wing. Next I don't, time. I don't think we would be as far along as we were, as we are now. So this is definitely a time saver. Um, but I don't see anything in here that we couldn't have done. Um, it's just a matter of time and effort. And at the time, the timing of the kits made a lot of sense to us. And yeah, I mean, if everything would have stayed on schedule, but it didn't, but that's life. It's life, but so pretty soon we'll swap this wing over. Um, uh, hopefully I had some good uh, time-lapse footage to go with this episode. I'll put in an edit in. If not, sorry, uh, you get stuck looking at us the whole time, but it's not that bad. But just in case, here's a couple shots of uh, Millie recently. She's just adorable, growing way too fast. Uh, she's had a couple build sessions, <laughs> but... Uh, she prefers to sleep. She prefers to sleep, and she hates it when the air pump runs. Yeah. So, but we'll get her out here building soon, because I got some real tight spots I need her hands in, like right down in, in there. That, 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 that would help. Um, so, but thank you for watching 14 Victor Echo. See you next time.